All right, time for part two. What's up, people? Fancy X A Nine here, and if you watched my last rat video, then well, yeah, I uh, mentioned a uh, a story that I was going to link in the description, and uh, yeah, I'm going to link the. Uh, both the article, you know, it's one of many uh, news outlet articles, as well as uh, the YouTube uh, video of the news report. Um, basically, we're going straight back into bullying, and this is probably going to be lengthy. Um, so, uh, if you hadn't actually seen the video or read the story yet, um, 11 year old boy, uh, Michael Moronis, had been teased and bullied at school because he, you know, he was a fan of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, and it just, it just spiraled out of control. You know, he was tired of being, uh, he was tired of being called gay and ugly and stupid and he just he, one day he came home from school he told his mom that he couldn't take he couldn't take it anymore you know he couldn't take all the, all the bullying anymore and well he tried to kill himself he's in the hospital they say that he's probably got permanent brain damage and even if he does actually wake up, if he does recover, he's going to be completely blind, so... Sorry to go back to the whole pony thing, but... This is kind of connected to that rant and, the uh, and of course, part one. Because it just doesn't make any sense. So, it, uh, I don't know, I decided to go back, you know, and read some more, and, you know, look up more comments and everything, and the support, the, the, um, outpouring of support have, has been just tremendous for this boy and his family, and it's just, it's overwhelming, really, and it really makes you think, now, We'll go into, um, we'll just go straight into basically some of the comments that I've actually read. Um, I'm trying to remember. Uh, I would actually just pull it up so I don't look stupid. Um, but, you know, I read a comment that said, uh, you know, that pretty much would blame the parents of the bullies for, uh, you know, the way that they act. That's the thing. That's not entirely true. There have been parents who have raised their children right, and yet this, and yet the child still turned out to be a total, um, you know, a total mess all on their own because they chose the path that they were going to go down, you know, because they wanted to be this way. Why? Because well. We're social creatures, but we also end up doing some really ridiculous things uh, when it comes to the negative side of it. Uh, you know, kind of like that uh, that gang mentality. You have like the cliques, you know, and then you have like the popular girls picking on uh, the mousy, uh, kind of shy, quiet girl who. You know, who they say is ugly and she's got split ends and she doesn't wear makeup and, you know, she's always keeping to herself with her nose in a book. You know, that, that like, stereotypical, cliched uh, scenario, you know, that's like one of the easiest ones that you could go to. That doesn't mean that, oh, the lead girl responsible for all of the teasing and tormenting, um, you know, was taught to be a bully herself, or you know, say uh, she she was being physically abused at home, and as a result, she's taking it out on somebody else. 
sometimes some people just do stuff like that just because they can and because they want to. I don't really get it, but that's how it is. I guess probably because they just have low self-esteem. They might not realize it, but maybe that's what it is. And so by putting somebody else down and making them feel like I do or maybe worse than I do, then I can feel better about myself in my current situation. But that's not exactly how it, how it is. And that's not how it works because at the end of the day, you're still unhappy. You know, it's a temporary high that you're making this person's life hell. And then it's one thing to to do that like every other day or, you know, several times a week or throughout the week or whatever. But when it goes beyond just the teasing and, you know, and, uh, you know, mocking uh, the girl for having a flat chest or, um, you know, or for somebody having a funny walk or something. And then, you know, just driving it home and wanting that person to just feel absolutely wrecked to the point that they contemplate taking their own life, snuffing out their own existence and leaving that void. It makes absolutely zero sense. And it, and and then, see, I've read comments that said, now, you know, they ought to get those boys that were teasing Michael and show them what they've done. Now, that might make some of them actually regret what they've done. For others, they'd wear that like a badge of honor. That would be it. Mission accomplished. We did it. We showed that pony boy what for. No. No. See, some people aren't really taking it into account. They're letting their emotions get to them and writing the first things that come to their mind. Instead of actually sitting down and kind of analyzing that first. I've actually had a little bit of time to mull this over. And it's still, still ridiculous. You know, just... Uh. And the thing that, that just really drove it home for me is his favorite character on the show is Pinkie Pie. So, well, her voice actress was, I think, on vacation and happened to hear about uh, what happened. And, well, she recorded a, a special message for him. Then, turns out, the other members of the cast also recorded messages for him. Now, that, that in and of itself is overwhelming that that happens. And every time I go back to that, I start to get a little teary-eyed because how, how often does that happen? Not very. Not freaking very. But then they say that, you know, there was a spike in his brain activity when he heard those voices, you know, in character and whatnot, you know, yeah. That was absolutely just incredible to hear that. But seriously, just 11 years old. Who the hell contemplates suicide at age 11? Really? I'm going to go and get a little personal. I have my own uh, bouts with depression at times, and it gets it gets crazy some days. Um, depends on the situation, if something happened or whatever, and at times I think about it. I actually do think about ending my own life. Do I ever intend on actually doing it? Have I ever attempted to do it? No. Because in all honesty, one, I, well, I think it's cowardly. Two, 
I'm too much of a damn coward to even try anyway. And then, well, three, I don't know, it just, you have to consider, you might have those dark days and it feels like you have nobody in your corner and it feels like you're all alone and helpless and powerless and you can't do anything about it. But you actually do have people that care about you. You do have people that love you. I think I mentioned this in the first video, but I can't stress it enough because it's true. It might not seem like it, but it's true. And you do it and you're gone. That leaves a hole in a lot of people's lives. And it hurts, and they don't understand, you know, it, it, you know, even if you left a note, you know, they still don't understand why or how, um, you know, just, ugh. And then there have been a lot of deaths recently at the time of this recording. It's, uh, February, uh, it's February 18th, um, uh, about, um, uh, a quarter to two in the morning, Central time and uh yeah just oh uh, man my uh my grandmother passed away uh like near mid january um and then i find out like uh juario died i'm like oh oh you didn't know he took his own life and i was devastated to find that out um, you know, and then, well, shoot, uh, getting personal again, one of my uncles died recently, uh, you know, uh, like this past weekend, and my, um, and then my other uncle had a heart attack, and he ended up in the hospital, so, I just the whole family is just in a state of shock right now so yeah stuff like this is kind of you know way too close to home for me right now and it, it's just really really shocking to hear that an 11 year old boy tried to kill himself over something so simple and stupid as liking a TV show. Double standards, you know, misconceptions, all the other stuff. Ugh. Makes no, makes no sense. And there's no point, there's no rhyme or reason to it to actually want somebody dead like that. For what it's worth, you might as well just actually kill them yourself instead of driving them to it. And that's not even me, you know, being legit about it and actually telling you, go do that. We already have enough of that shit as it is with, the, uh, with all these school shootings and everything. So, I gotta go back to the comments. There have been some comments saying, uh, uh, there have been some comments saying that nowadays children are too sensitive. They don't have uh, the skills to cope with, uh, with the harsh reality that is, well, living. You know, they're, um, they're really uh, cozy and comfy and sheltered and uh, they don't really know how to stand on their own and toughen up when they need to I'm not saying oh you gotta be tough all the time like I was saying uh, in the other video uh, you know uh, like that's the the gender role of, of a guy he can't cry he's gotta be tough all the time yeah and that's that's not it no there's times when when you can cry there's times when you can laugh 
There's times when you can be serious and times when you can be silly. You know, it's just... It doesn't have to stay in a certain path or, you know, or be associated with only this. And since you're a boy, you have to do this and you have to follow in your daddy's footsteps. And you got to be a man. You got to be tough. You got to... You have to do what you have to do. Everybody can say whatever about, you know, this person or how they could have did this or how they should did that. But at the end of the day, it's on you. And at the end of the day, that's them. They need to take care of their business. So it's just, it's shocking. It is absolutely freaking shocking. And at this point, I'm talking. I'm speaking generally. There's no reason for this kind of stuff to keep going on. Now, you're going to get teased. You know, it, it, that's that's just how it is. Now, some friendly ribbing, you know, to kind of, kind of, you know, get you to toughen up a little bit. You know, yeah. It's going to happen, but to absolutely go out of your way to make somebody's day, to make somebody's life an absolute living hell the entire day at school, at work, at church, um, at practice, anything, is absolutely ridiculous and it's a waste of time and energy uh, on, uh, you know, on the aggressor's part. It makes no freaking sense, and it's ridiculous. Then you've got, um, then, you know, you've got the internet version of it, and that certainly doesn't help. I mean, seriously. Now, I will go, to go back to the whole brony thing, because I didn't actually point it out in the last video. I meant to actually edit that in and everything. I've been editing that damn video all night, and I did both of these in roughly the same day. Um, now, there is that kind of thing where you have, uh, like I said, the, the loudmouth types that will go on and on and preach on and on about the show and how this character is their favorite character and how you should like this show. Why don't you like this show? You should totally like this show because this is awesome and it's the best thing in the world. Forget all the other shows. This one is the best. And da, da, da. and that does get annoying. And that's not that's not the whole group. That's a select few that act like that. And you know what? That happens in every fandom. And in all honesty, yeah, it comes off quite a lot similar to, uh, I mean, that kind of behavior, uh, that kind of mentality is very similar to uh, stereotypical Christians. I was going to save that for a whole other video, but I want to drive that point home too right quick. The stereotypical Christian, the one that you usually see, you know, the one that's always the Bible thumping one, the ones telling you that you're going to hell, the ones that's constantly discriminating, that's hypocrisy. Because that's not the teachings of Christ. That's not how it is. That's the second video that I sat there and did this. But I felt like I needed to drive that home because it makes no sense. It sounds like I'm using the Chewbacca defense. I'm not trying to be funny right now. That's the thing. Anytime that I'm trying to be serious, you know, even when I was a kid and I was trying to be serious in front of my classmates, they'd start laughing. You know, because, the, you know, it's just, well, who does he think he is trying, trying to sound like an adult? What? You know, and this, that, and the other. Yeah, you know, man. See, now this is where that, uh, where whatever the hell point in our culture is right now should actually take into effect where you don't care what people think. You know, you have your opinion and this, that, and the other, and that's where it stands, and you don't care. 
where is that at the end of the day? Where is that when that kind of stuff happens where you actually don't care? Now, maybe that's the thing. Maybe that's just talk and you do actually care what people think. And it leads to some really, really wicked stuff going on because hurt doesn't completely go away depending on the kind of hurt like I said you lose somebody close to you that hurt never goes away um, I recorded uh, a series of videos uh, earlier in the month haven't actually uploaded them yet uh, where I go on to talk about me yeah losing your dad uh, at 13 going on 14 seriously not too far from uh, from your birthday too yeah that that really messes you up especially if you don't really have any other uh, you know older male uh, influence you know uh, from people that are willing to actually do that and you know it just it gets you and so I'm just kind of isolated on my own, just in my box, in my room, you know, doing stuff like this. And I think that's kind of one of my ways of coping, you know, with the loneliness and the sadness is making all sorts of videos and just, you know, as as you can tell, I'm I'm an insightful person. I'm always reading and you know, just I don't know. I'm just open minded and and well that actually makes it a bit easier for me to sit down and do stuff like this you'd think that that will actually make it easier for me to blend in and fit in uh, with everybody else but I don't know I end up being more like both of my parents like my dad I got uh, I've got some uh, something of a temper uh, then uh, like my mom I'm, you know, I'm the one that a lot of people rely on, but also like my mom, I kind of don't fit in everywhere, you know, and so I got to look for, uh, I got to look for that small group of people that I actually fit in with. And it's not really going to be a whole lot of people. It's not going to be like, oh, okay, you know, you got like 12 friends or something. No, nah, it's going to be like maybe three or four. You know, and you know, you're, you might not even really talk all that much. Seriously, those formulative years are gone. I'm in my mid-twenties now. So, this is that point where work and start, you know, uh, planning things out. You know, start uh, making my long-term goals and start up a family. Or at least, you know, start dating and... You know get engaged and then get married and then start a family and just keep going from there yeah all that you know little bit of plan and uh thinking about it seriously that's why i consider your teenage years you know all that stuff about oh this is my boyfriend oh this is my girlfriend eh, you know oh no that's or, oh, no I, I don't really do the boyfriend girlfriend thing it's too complicated we just hook up that's that's a whole lot of temporary crap that you're doing in order to to like move through that phase so that then by the time you know you're now an adult now you can actually start doing all that uh, for real because all that was practice because your hormones are you know still just all over the place and you're not really focused and you don't really actually know what you're doing uh you know in this world you, you don't know where you're going in life and you know you're trying to figure out who you are and what you want to do and who you want to be but you know you don't really think about that kind of stuff at age 11 you start thinking about that stuff at like 15 and 16 you know, you want to do, um, you know, you want to do music. 
you want to be uh, you want to be a dancer you, you want to be an astronaut you know you want to be a pilot stuff like that yeah you say that when you're a child you know when you're like five or whatever but you don't really actually start making moves towards that until you're in your late teens and then you know when you go to college or technical school or whatever you go to and get your certifications and everything you actually put that time in you know your young adult years those formulative years into focusing and developing what you're going to do and you know and then you start living life I don't just mean, you know, party all the time, party all night, you know, uh, popping mollies and all that other crazy bullshit that really doesn't matter in the long run. You know, I mean, you know, yeah, you can still have a good time while being wild, you know, and having sex with all sorts of random people, um, you know, and just... What I'm getting at is you don't get to do that if you kill yourself at age 11. All that potential wasted. Gone in an instant. Everything that you could have done, what you could have been, only a thought, only a dream. Whatever little notes that you left behind, you know, any kind of drawings or, uh, you know, vlogs or blogs or any kind of, uh, any kind of notes about, oh, this is what I dreamt of doing. Or, you know, I thought about these three things that I wanted to do in my life. And then all I can do is just sit there and think about that and who you were. And what you could have been. And it just goes over your head. You don't really think about that kind of stuff. You know, uh, I hear uh, that bullshit uh, phrase you're ruining my life. Your life has only just begun. These are the first steps on that long road ahead. Your whole life is ahead of you. Believe me. Like, you know, shoot, some people retire when they're probably in their 50s. Some people retire when they're in their 60s. You're 16? You got a long way to go. You got a long way to go. Your life has not even really actually started. You're still in school. You're not actually really working, are you? Okay, you, do you have any children? What life? Maybe a social life, but a life life? You know, uh, paying a mortgage or rent, you know, car notes, um, you know, bills, stuff like that taxes you know that's that's life even though that's all you know money but that's a part of, that's a part of living you gotta pay bills you gotta you know you gotta support your children you gotta support your spouse uh, you gotta make sure that uh, that you have something to eat you know somewhere to sleep you know all that and you know the stuff that they take for granted and it just it just I don't know you, you don't appreciate what you have until you don't have it anymore I'm 24 I'm gonna be 25 in July and here I am talking to you guys like I'm like what double that 48 <laughs> but hey that's a that's a gift that I inherited 
comes from having a whole bunch of old folks in my family. Um, <laughs> comes from having, uh, you know, some people with sense and, uh, you know, and just some sort of thinking to them to allow me to actually know all that. That's why I'm so grateful to have my mom. And I said before, my mom is basically mama to everybody in the family. Like now, you know, my cousin, uh, shoot, my mom is helping her through that. You know, it, like I said, it's never easy to, um, never easy to lose somebody that you love. And yeah, she's grown. She's in her 30s. But still, the way the current situation is, you know, just so crazy. So, yeah, that, that just totally like just almost bowled her completely over. Uh, so, she turned to my mom for, uh, for guidance. Yeah, and to be honest, my mom's probably like one of the more, you know, the more together people in the family. So that's why everybody comes to her because, you know, yeah. So, yeah, it leads me to that. If I took my own life, good Lord, I couldn't imagine what that would do to her. Shoot, that would probably kill her. And it's the last thing I'd want to do. So I tough it out. Um, you know, if you're a religious person, you pray. Um, if you're not, then that's fine. You know, meditate or um, do whatever actually makes you feel better. Um, as long as it's not illegal, as long as it doesn't actually hurt you. As long as it doesn't uh, do any real long-lasting damage to your body in the long run, um, mm -hmm. I say read, play some video games, watch something funny, do something that uh, that makes you feel good and can help you take your mind off of it. Don't try and wallow in uh, in like what I call the sea of darkness, and it's just you know it's so deep underneath and drowning, you know. Sometimes you need a hand to pull you up and make you feel safe and make you feel better. And this is another 30 damn minute video. But, like I said, some things need to be said. And that's, I guess, why I'm here. It's that kind of influence that I have to uh, just be who I am and say uh, and say what I say, and you know, there are people that actually enjoy listening to this, despite my stupid sounding voice. You know, but that's not something I get depressed about, <laughs> or you know. Uh, you know, or just any of the other things. Uh, despite me rambling and everything, I actually do hit the nail on the head. And I get my point across in one way or another. And it just... It does what it, what it does. And that's why I do these. Yeah, I have some kind of original content, right? So... I'm glad that you guys actually uh, glad you guys actually take time out to listen because well sometimes all it takes is somebody to listen and it can actually help so yeah if you are in a crisis uh, reach out to someone believe me there are people that are willing to listen and there are people who are willing to help <laughs> 